G'day, it's Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at a piece of technology that I've been really interested in covering for nearly over a year. It's taken me a year to compile enough information and for it to be comfortable with myself to actually be able to present this video. Here in the Origin series, if you haven't watched an episode of ours already, we look at the why, the what, the where and the how. And we apply this to pieces of kit and pieces of technology that the humble, avid explorer or adventurer uh, uses on a daily basis. But today what we're going to be looking at is the origin of one of the most influential pieces of navigational equipment in the modern era. This is none other than the humble GPS and the origins of this bit of kit is absolutely fascinating. So join me as we look into the origin of the GPS. In 1957 we saw the launch of the world's first man-made satellite. This was Sputnik. The simple satellite was situated in the nose cone of an R-7 intercontinental ballistic missile. While the Soviets looked to explore outer space, the Americans looked to explore the deeps of the world's oceans and had developed the world's first nuclear submarine, Nautilus. With a nuclear submarine and its ultimate refinement, the Americans would later develop what would be known as Polaris. This would allow for intercontinental ballistic missiles to be fired from submerged submarines. However, one problem was faced. How to pinpoint a submarine accurately and then exactly where the desired target would be for these missiles to fall upon. For hundreds of years, man has looked into the stars for a form of navigation, and this has been through the use of the sexton. The first positioning system to utilise satellites was developed in 1958, and this would be known as the Transit Navigational System. It became fully operational in 1964. With a number of satellites, this allowed for submarines to be able to plot their location accurately day or night. Transit was very successful, and with a large stockpile of satellites, the system saw service well into the 1990s. Other derivatives of the global navigational systems were also developed, with GPS as we know today coming online in 1973. Though these systems were developed for military purposes and it would take an aviation disaster before GPS would be realised to have civilian applications and purpose. In 1983, Korean airline 007 strayed off course and wandered inadvertently into Soviet airspace. It was shot down by a Soviet MiG. In 1985, GPS was made available to the civilian market, though the signal was scrambled, and this would allow only for an accuracy of up to 20 metres. Though it wasn't until 1990 where accuracy really came into its own, and this was with the US-led Operation Desert Storm. With the invasion of Kuwait by the Iraqi army, it was decided to push these forces back. One barrier that these US and NATO forces would have to overcome would be the Arabian Desert. This was believed to be completely and utterly impenetrable by the Iraqi armed forces. Therefore, this oversight would prove to be their weakness. Though the US had a trump card up their sleeve, and this would be known as GPS. By being able to plot at their position accurately, the US-led forces were able to outflank the Iraqi forces and bring a swift end to the Gulf War. Since the 1990s, GPS has been growing in influence in the civilian applications 
and the importance has been realised by other countries. And this has led to the development of the Galileo system by the European Union and Glasnost, which is the Russian derivative of GPS. And China has also developed their own version too. Where is GPS going? Well, the second generation of GPS satellites has been launched and should come online at the end of 2019. Improving the accuracy from 5 metres down to 1 metre. It's a fantastic system and it's something that I always take with me when I go out in the bush. However, I'm not completely and utterly reliant on it. Like anything made by mankind, it isn't perfect because we ourselves aren't perfect either. It has its own foibles and its own little inaccuracies now and then. But either way, I still find it absolutely fascinating that a system of this nature can give us a one metre accuracy on this diverse terrain and this rather unique shape of planet Earth. If you want to see more videos like this, please click on the subscribe button below. And if you want to support the generation of content here at Seriously Series, please join us on Patreon. And I hope to see you in our next video. Anyway, I'll catch you later.